the soldier and the singer. Speeding along in an open jeep on a dark, deserted road in war-torn South Vietnam was not the normal thing for a 21-year-old Australian civilian girl to be doing. It was 1970 and I was in South Vietnam as a singer in an Australian show band entertaining the troops. We were en route to a US Marine base outside Da Nang to perform a show but had become lost. The road was a dead end. In the fading light I could make out paddy fields and small villages in the valley below against the silhouette of mountains beyond. Helicopters buzzed in the night sky and red tracer bullets shot toward the enemy below. A huge knot developed in my stomach as we three girls were handed helmets to wear, whilst bulletproof vests were given to the males in our group with instructions to shield us if we were attacked. The next road we were to take was a red road, and there was a likelihood of us being fired upon by the VC. I had known very little about the Vietnam War until four years earlier when a friend asked me if I would like to correspond with an Australian soldier in South Vietnam. Her boyfriend was serving there and had written saying that a lot of his mates were lonely and homesick and didn't get much mail from girls. I agreed to write and was given the name and address of an Australian soldier based at Nui Dat. The year was 1966. It was my first year of employment and I was 17 years old. The first letter from Private Graham Warburton arrived in August. It was a short, friendly letter, but I could tell that he was scared. He was only 21, and I can imagine now, after having sons of my own, how his parents must have felt as they waved him goodbye. A mixture of pride, fear and uncertainty as to whether they would ever see him again. I wrote back to Graham, or Nugget as he was known to his mates, and received another letter in September. He told of the nightmare over here and how he had lost another mate and that you don't know when your turn is coming. He enclosed a black and white photograph of himself on which he signed the back to Pam Love Graham. I can't remember what I wrote back but I hope it was something that made him happy and gave him something to keep fighting for. Crouching down as low as possible in the back of the jeep, I peered out from under my oversized helmet and looked up at our driver a young Marine of about 21. In the half light I could see the side of his tanned young face as he concentrated on the road and I wondered what he was thinking. As I watched him, my thoughts went back to Nugget. Sadly, I'd never heard from him again after his last letter in September 1966. Private Graham Warburton died from a gunshot wound during action against the Viet Cong in Phuc Thuy province on October the 1st, 1966.